All right, everybody. Here I am. Mark Lenig is one of the greatest. He was in the grunge era with Pearl Jam and Nirvana and Sound God, but he was with the Screaming Trees, actually. We're going to play some of his songs. Because he's always been one of my favorites, actually. Mark Lanigan, okay, Mark Lanigan, dead at 57 in Kilkenny, Ireland. Turns out his death rate, his death was in Ireland. But someone featured that, the drinking channel last night, GSHTV, VTV, featured this. Wow, I'm like, I played this guy's music all last week, and now he's dead. I'll play it for you in a minute. Hold on, listen. Listen to the music. No. I used to play his songs while I smoked cigars after. I actually listened to him, but some of his more... This song, too, is some of his mellow songs I've actually listened to while uh, smoking sometimes. Mark Lanigan actually had some songs. They were like what I would call good just sitting, smoking cigar kind of songs, you know? Actually. A little bit of Sonic Youth, baby, here and there. This is what the Genesee ice looks like when I pour it in a glass right there. That's what it looks like. It's almost like a cheap micro brew, actually. Genesee brews their beer in such a way that it's like a cheap micro brew. So you're getting like a really good deal when you get the six pack of Genesee. It's like a more watered down micro brew. That's pretty much how I look at Genesee beer. It's just watered down micro brew type beer. Which makes it better than some of the other domestics, actually. Watered down um, micro brew is still an improvement from from Budweiser, I think. You taste it, there's more hoppiness than some of the other domestics when you're drinking Genesee. Even though they got a cheap ice beer, it's it's still a quality beer. Right here. Genesee is one of the best bangs for the buck. And not many bars sell it now, I think, for that reason. Because they know it's cheaper and they want to make more money off other stuff. They don't even sell natural light very much in bars, but they don't even sell Genesee really anywhere. Unless you go, I don't know, you might have to go to Minnesota in some back country town, I don't know. Maybe like Grumpy Old Bed, they had Schmidt on tap or something. So, something like that, maybe. Nothing would continue to run. Eh, fuck off, asshole. 
Uh, anyways. So yeah, I'm gonna play some Screaming Trees, alright? A good song from from Screaming Trees, okay? Mark Lanigan's first band. Studio version. Studio version. <laughs> it might. <laughs> it doesn't give me bad breath, I'll tell you that. It doesn't. This is a small crowd. This is the Washington State Boy. Because I woke up watching Bird, and now I'm playing it through the two. That's actually funny. I used to want to go to Seattle. I wanted to move to Seattle. When I, was there. I actually did. I would have been one of those people if I was older. I would have moved to Seattle. If I was only very good, I probably would have moved there. That's the truth. That was the time that all the stuff was going on. They never had a different generation of parents, probably. Awesome. So I probably would have done it. I probably would have left to see that. Uh, Assuming I was born in 1973. Assuming I was born in 1973. I would have I would have left to see that uh, for sure. I absolutely would have made it there. I think I would have. In Portland, nothing in Port at all. See Mark Lanigan, the real thing he ever tells him? Queens of the Stone Age, too. Remember the Hanging Tree by Queens of the Stone Age? This is going to be a Mark Lanigan tribute hour right here. I just have a feeling this is going to be a Mark Lanigan tribute hour. Right here. I might have to change the title of the stream. Hanging Tree. Anyone ever hear this? 
another big battle. This is one of the best previous battles that I saw to the death. You bench. Well, at least you had the fucking bench in it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not what it is. Yeah. So, no, I, I don't do it much, even on my personal time. I can't, I, you know, I can't even tell you the last time I belched, honestly. Two, two days ago, I might have let out a light one. I don't know. Odyssey. <laughs> I don't know how I got the fuck. How the fuck it got to this? Christ sake. Anyway. What else did Mark Lanigan do? He did something. Mark Lanigan showed up in some... Oh, I know. Isabel Campbell. Mark Lanigan and Isabel Campbell, the Ballad of the Broken Seas. You know who Isabel Campbell is, don't you? She's out of England. Belle and Sebastian. She was with Belle and Sebastian. I love Belle and Sebastian. You know Ramblin' Man by, by Hank Williams? They did a, he did a cover of it. An awesome friggin' cover. I'm gonna play that right now. More a nocturnal kind of song, but...
Oh, the Beer Barrel website. You know the beerbarrel.net? That place was shit. That was like, boy, like alt-right boy. That's what that was. That was the alt-right before the alt-right came into being. Actually. It was right over on that website. And they had it out for me. They didn't like me at all. They, they got me on that site to troll me. They did not. Yeah. I'll talk about it in a minute. Hey, listen to me. They have no right now, you know. They have no right now. That's why I like to go down. But that woman who was singing with him, I'm going to play a song called "It Is Is It Wicked Not to Care. Bell and Sebastian out of the UK now does this, Is It Wicked Not to Care. This is her voice right here. Very common. Let's have a sword fight. <laughs> they were in that movie Pumpkin with Christina Ricci. They were on the soundtrack for that. This is British indie rock right here.
2000s, maybe 99, I forget. 2000, at the most, probably 2005 or 2004. It's in that time bracket, though. They did a song called Stars, and Tra Stars of Track and Field. Okay, this will bore the shit out of the trolls, too. This will make them totally go <laughs> Just play the most mellow, boring indie rock, and they'll freaking screw. <laughs> Never know it, it as you never, never show it. It, it is absolutely. Know <laughs> it, cause you never show it. it. You always, always get your way. way. <laughs> Remember Surge with the fucking horse head and you got all pissed off about it? <laughs> and I put the horse head on? <laughs> that was funny as hell. Never rated. Boy, I never rated. I was Right. Oh, he criticized me for liking Indie Rock, too. He said it was a Jewish controlled music. Everyone's Jews in Indie Rock. I'm like, well, everything's controlled by Jews, though. It's not just Indie Rock. Everything is, isn't it? <laughs> Supposedly, you just got to pick what you like. That, that's what I said, though. <laughs> It's Jew, yeah, but it's also a penis in some way, too. It's more acid of Jew, if anything. Like ethnic liberal Jew, really. It's like a, it's an acquired taste, but, but yeah, a lot of it's Jew, really. It but so is everything I said to him. I mean, the producers of all these metal bands, too. She had the mood, she had the speed, it went to her head. She never needed anyone to get around the job. When she was on her back, she had the knowledge to get in the car. Get what she wanted. Stars in track and field, you are. Stars in track and field, you are. Stars in track and field are beautiful people. Stars in track and field, you are. Stars in track and field, you are. Stars in track and field are beautiful people. Democracy Now just shall be a no. I just got a Democracy Now notification. 
attracted field you are. Stars attracted field you are. Stars attracted field are beautiful people. Great song, though. Gotta admit, that's an awesome, slow, nice anthem right there. You know Chumbawamba? Chumbawamba. I think Chumbawamba's from England. I don't know exactly where Chumbawamba's from. But Chumbawamba, when you think of them, you think of I get knocked down, but I get up again. Um, that's what you think of when you think of them, right? Or at least America, when they heard Chumbawamba. Six in the morning, don't want to wake. Sun laying low and the world sleeping late. Hate like the river rocks heavy and deep. Oh, I wish that they'd sack me if they need to see. Eventually, but it's just the tough, shitty time for me right now. It's been that way for a while, too. I'll get a guitar, but I just haven't gotten one, you know. Someone's offering me a guitar, actually, but I just don't know if I want to go to Chicago to pick it up. I don't know. I have a trip to make. If I'm, like, doing a nine-hour thing, I don't know. Honestly... People who say this, I don't even have their contact information. You know, I don't even have their contact information. The people who say it in the comments, oh, I got a guitar for you if you come to Chicago. Some guy wants to give me a guitar, but I don't even have his fucking contact information. His name's Todd, I think. I don't even have his contact information. Even if I wanted to get the guitar from him. Hold on a sec. I'll be right back.
But I played the. What I played, I, I hey, yes, the other day, right? I actually, hey, Herman, I got a story for you. The other day, right? I um, that girl who came to this hotel room thinking it was going to be a drug deal, then she got me instead. But I ended up talking to her. I had her in the hotel room, man. Actually, she came back actually. But anyways, I um. I played her, I noticed. I played it to her. I said how I was on YouTube and stuff, or I've done YouTube. I didn't give her my main channel, per se, but I told her I've done YouTube. But I played a song called I Notice for her. I played the I Notice song for her. And you know what she actually said? You know what she actually said? This was like a couple days ago, too. Probably, probably Monday. I'm thinking Monday, okay? And she said it sounded like Neutral Milk Hotel. She said it sounded like Neutral Milk Hotel. She knows like certain bands, like Neutral Milk Hotel. She's like one of the few who lives here who's like that. I guess I met I met a local girl here. I guess she she said she has she had a boyfriend in Louisville or something. I don't know. She's probably going to Louisville as soon as she can or something like that. But but she's from Indianapolis here though. I mean, if, she, if I see her again, I might actually do a live stream and introduce her. I don't know. I don't know how long I'm going to be here, though. But I'll ask her and see if she wants to come on, maybe. I could say, hey, I'm doing a live stream. If you want to be a part of it, I could, I could introduce you or something. But I don't know. But she's, she's just having a lot of trouble, you know. But anyways, um, so yeah, she thought I sounded like Neutral Milk Hotel back in the day. Like, you know who that is, right? Have you ever heard of Neutral Milk Hotel? What Travel Chronicles? What, huh? But it was kind of on the idea of this, okay? Neutral Milk Hotel in the aeroplane over the sea. What a beautiful day. Here it is. Neutral Milk Hotel. Right here. What a beautiful place. can make it sound good but I'm a below average guitar player. Below the average. 
I make up for it in my education. Or my savior. I make up for it in other ways. <coughs> so it's still listenable. People would still listen to it. It wouldn't be so bad that people would not listen to it. You know what I'm saying? That I'm a beat post? Yeah, a beat poet. Okay. Okay, I have, I have the beat. Even though I'm not 100% a great guitar player, and I can't cover too many songs perfectly, but, but you want to know something? I don't want to be that friggin' person, okay, who, who covers all these songs and is so good at cover songs because then they don't write their own shit. Then they don't write their own shit. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. But they don't write their own shit if they cover all these songs and they're great at covering songs. They don't write anything. I think, yeah, these, these guys, they can play guitar so great but they never write anything. Kind of like, well, kind of like Mark Terry, but you know what I mean? But he's trying to be some grandpa rapping type of guy or whatever. He raps, but that's just a product of that culture, I guess. Down there where he lives, I don't know. But, but anyways. But yeah, there's so many people out there, they do cover songs, and that's all they do. They play the guitar, what appears to be pristine, but they, they don't write anything of their own, you know? Like, I'm someone I'll have below average to average guitar playing, and I'll come up with a good song when I don't have writer's block. Like, years ago, I wrote songs like The Story of the Durain Chuchi Mama. It was kind of like a bar song, like it was kind of like a more right-leaning kind of song, you know, like, it's the story of the Duran Chuchi Mama, you know she's really insane, so insane, so insane, it's the story, like country rock, I wrote country rock songs years ago, with a very funny message, like the story of the Duran Chuchi Mama, that, that was like supposed to be a country rock song. That I came up with. And then I did I did something based on Creed. Like I used to listen to Creed and I did some some lyrics based on Creed, but it still came out more entertaining than anything Scott Stapp could have ever done. I'm telling you right now. Like Scott Stapp from Creed, you know, you heard I say oh so to hear my head uh, I read the guns it's her, and I be a silver and I say, oh, like when you hear that, but I would do a song like that, but it would be funnier, like there's something I have to say about the way you make me feel. I'm so damn grateful, cause I know that you are able to give me what I need. <laughs> I wrote that, and then I wrote this, and then I showed a girl in class this. Like one of the Chabonier, I didn't tell you about the Chabonier twins. When I went to school, I went, I had like the Chabonier twins, or like two sisters. They were attractive, but one of them was more popular than the other one. But the one that was less popular was also attractive in her own way. I actually saw more appeal in her, actually. But just so funny, she was the one asking me about the song when I when I showed her the lyrics, okay? And then she's like, what do you mean? Like, like you're trying to say to give me what I need? Like, what kind of song is this? Like, to give me what I need? It's almost like she was thinking in her own terms. Like, like the song was speaking to her. She was talking to me, like, like give me what I need? <laughs> so then after that chorus it was like nobody gave a fuck about me that's why I gave a fuck about you I really love you I really care about you looking at you oh it really 
makes me so high, high as the sky. That was my version of a Creed song. When I wrote a Creed type of a song, that was my version of it. Nobody gave a fuck about me. That's why I give a fuck about you. <laughs> exactly. That's how I used to write songs. But then the internet fucking killed my creativity. If only for the fucking internet. I would have done voice recordings. I would have perfected everything. But the whole the fucking internet took over my mind. I'm not saying it's not over yet. It's not over. I could still regain my creativity at some point. But being on the internet and having so many problems in my life with like financial problems, just having to pay motels out. I'm just glad I'm not in debt. I could not be in debt if I was living this lifestyle. I couldn't afford it if I was in debt. I'll tell you that right now. But even then, I still can't totally afford it. I can't. I'm probably on my last legs right now. I have a miracle in the next six months, five months, maybe four months, three months. I need a miracle. Because, you know, I think it'll happen. I think I had to get out of Florida. That was the absolute first step I had to freaking do. I had to get out of Florida. I did it, and now I'm on the next step. Then I'm going to go to the next step. I don't have tarot cards, no. I don't do tarot cards. Nah, I really don't. That's more Carolyn's thing. That is my thing. I believe in some things, but I don't usually, I don't use the cards, you know, and all that shit. So I got five viewers and just you talking, so all you creeps out there watching me, okay, have fun watching me. As you know, you're jealous, you like the show, you want to participate in the show, but you know what, if you have some kind of antics, I won't let you participate in the show, so, uh, okay, good, now that I said that, um, so, um, anything I can show off here? I don't know. What can I show off? I'm preparing to eat a big meal after. That's why I'm kind of drinking now, so I can, so I can kind of build up a hunger for it. I guess you could say. Ian, I'm trying to wake up. Oh, I got this apricot scrub, actually. This is good stuff. I got this actually in Florida before I left apricot scrub. This stuff has a very nice smell. It actually smells like squash kind of when you open it. It kind of smells a little bit like squash. Apricot scrub. It's very good. Gently exfoliates for smooth clarity. Normal for combination skin. Right there. I got that stuff. Ah. Uh, Listen to the hall for a sec. The difference, for the most part, is evident from where I was before, you could say. Someone was in the hallway, now they're gone. You know, for the most part, this is a quiet place. There were just a bunch of rowdies the other night talking and talking all hours, and they ended up getting thrown out at the end of it. But they were here like 24 hours, like aggravating everybody. Pretty much. Um... So no, I don't really have too many hood rat type people here. There's a few types like that, I guess you could say. Not many though. I don't I don't hear too much with that. This hotel's actually mostly white people. It's actually mostly white people here. In Indianapolis. But the city's 30% black. 
you see black people around Indianapolis, but and it has about the same percentage that Columbia has, about the same. In fact, Columbia's got, I think, more. Okay, because because it was oh that's right, it was also a very smaller populated city too. It was about 135. It felt bigger than 135,000 though. 180,000, maybe somewhere around that. 135 to 180, Columbia had. And it felt just as urban as Indianapolis. I mean, Indianapolis in some areas actually feels like a country town. For an 880,000 880, population city, it's got 880,000 people. Yeah. You saw the skyscraper that I did, I filmed the other day. That's a nice skyscraper, too. They actually have a skyline here. But around the city, it's just a pain getting around because of the roads and shit. You can't really walk too many places. But but city-wise, they do have a skyscraper, that big main skyscraper that's long and tall, and it's pointy. That always gets my attention when I drove around here. Actually... Now, when you hear people talking out in the hall, it sounds like this. See? See the difference? There's more people, they kind of sound like Jody, actually. Like, they have that common accent, you know? Like, I hear them sometimes, and they go by. They have, like, that calming way of talking, like that Appalachian kind of accent. It's kind of present here, actually. Like you hear them walking by and stuff like that. It's kind of nice. You hear the older ladies talking in their Appalachian accents. It's actually soothing, I think. You like hear them going by when you're sleeping or something. Or people talking in the hallway, I hear. Hold on. Hold on a sec. This is why I listen to. Pretty much. Hold on, sir.
I need a loss. Yeah, I played it earlier, actually. I played it. I need a loss. Yeah, I played it. <laughs> probably be on here for a little bit longer. That would be dull, but I probably have. Probably got a couple more I can probably do here. Hey, Hermit. Or Edward, whatever. Uh. This is a song called The Jockey Jews. Okay. It's actually one of my favorite indie songs that exists. One of my favorites. I don't know about the favorite, but it's up there, I would say. It's called The Junkie Jews. <laughs> Have you ever played this one before or no? <clears throat> The chalky Jews So much to lose The chalky Jews Sang the blues Corey died and took the sand A sequel to the Ten Commands The Chief Highlighted in his veins He's holding he The junkie dreams So much to lose The junkie dreams Sing The blues Funny thing is, I wonder if this would be an anti-Semitic song. It is real. I wonder if this would be considered anti-Semitic or the sort of movie as a part of song. It would actually be interesting if it actually was. I never researched it because there's not much to research. But what would they think about this in Israel? I wonder if it is real, the song would be condemned, if it would be hate speech over there. Who knows?
Do you want to hear a mesmerizing song? You cannot quit smoking. So all you smoke is out there, okay? You cannot, you cannot quit smoking. Smoke. The city, city distracts you. You stare yeah. out the window yeah. and watch yeah. the smoke lift yeah. through the city. Yeah. It's lifting. Yeah. You cannot yeah. quit smoking. Smoke. You walk down the hallway. Your hair, you keep twisting it. Sit by the TV. The action distracts you. The sitcoms are silly. No one's like that, really. You can't smoke too much and you can't tell your family. You can't let them smell it because it's unhealthy. Your grandma had cancer, so don't make dumb choices. You tried to quit once, but you started to get heavy and your boyfriend won't like it if you get too heavy like your boyfriend so you can't quit smoking and you can't tell your boyfriend that you want to keep the baby you cannot quit smoking your eyes on the skyline when it rains here it's pretty it feels like the movies you feel like an actress just sitting inhaling you like the way actresses look when they're smoking mysterious windows mysterious places curled up on your bedspread with green and white colors your hands on your belly your belly feels empty it feels like you're floating it feels like you're floating like great macy's floats and parades by the river the green color jewel box your grandmother gave you is spinning inside you hey, wait wait dreaming awake on your bedspread and you can't quit smoking you see that there's rules for these things in the movies you smoke cigarettes when the sex scene is finished but when is it over i mean when is it really finished And outside your city is rough edged and endless. You sit by the window and suck down your cigarette. Traffic is moving and traffic is lifting. And all of these forces are rushing and endless. With every decision comes less possibility. But smoking is easy. It says death, I'm coming. It says you don't yeah. own me. There's a case you don't out there. You're gonna go to why are you crying? This should be so easy. You got no self control and it you makes no you feel worthless. You always were needy, you always, you always were needy. Were and even as a child, you took more than your portion. And you God knows right passion. now, you don't want another yeah. cigarette. I know it's awesome. This, this stuff's good. Why, why more people don't think this kind of music is hip is beyond me. I'll tell you, this is just genius lyrics right here. He did a song about the president, too. When George W. Bush was president, he just freaking ranted about him. I think the song was called The Last Election or something. A very political, groundbreaking, like... Kind of gives you hope a little bit, but he sounds a little like a marathon right here, right? Like a field of the flow. You got to vote for this person. So Dallas, I have a little very soon. off your brow there's still enough weapons to kill all seven billion of us the president's driving air force one his daddy gave him the keys and he's drunk the governor of the brothers from texas is next to his lexus runs on tax incentives oil and misdirection who are these clowns why do they decide basic things for 
I don't want to make a choice. I just want to kiss the girls and hang out with the boys. The last election, choose a direction, any direction, any direction. Lincoln is drinking with JFK in the kitchen. Kind of, kind of like they, it goes good together, like his lines. Whose future is this? I disagree privately, but I still pay the toll so they don't shut down the highways. If I see that girl, I'm gonna take her out for dinner. And if I'm feeling lucky, might even try to kiss her. So here we are, this could be, come on, the last election, find a connection, any connection, any connection, any connection. This is off the winding sheet right here. 
eyes of a child. Mark Lanigan, eyes of a child. Through the eyes of a child and a Yeah, and Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters were also with Mark Lanigan getting Queens of the Stone Age also. But a song that sounds a lot like Queens of the Stone Age, it was kind of like the same kind of sound, but it was a... It, it featured PJ Harvey, okay? It's called Hit the City, all right? 
Is he my favorite dog? I kind of thought about it driving through here actually the damn time I played this song. Probably played this album all week So I think the Indianapolis is what I think of this song probably more. So let's do it. saying these these are the days this is so old now it's like back at this time now i'm gonna say this is the good old days because now everything's just fucked you know these here were the good old days right here nothing now i don't think can compare to this i really don't 2003, 2004, looking totally like the good old days of Exeter right now. At this point in time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 